This video will be the first in a new 12 part series that I'm putting together called The Complete Guide to Tick Tick, where I'm planning to cover Tick Tick in detail in every aspect. So I'm starting out with how do you sign up for an account? How do you download apps? How do you input tasks? And we'll get into more complex things like how to use the Kanban view and how do you create custom filters? We're going to cover everything. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos on this channel, you might notice some rehashing of some of that material, but I'm planning to go even deeper this time, more detailed, more comprehensive, a little bit slower to make sure that we cover everything. This series is designed to help you understand TickTick's fundamental concepts like tasks and lists. And then we will expand and build on those concepts as we get into some of the more advanced topics later on in this series. So in the first part of this series, I'm going to cover how to sign up for a new Tick Tick account, how to download the apps, how to set your theme. We'll spend a large portion of time on a navigational overview of the system. And then we'll cover all of the ways, or at least most of the ways that you can add tasks to the system. Hello, I'm Joshua Best. All right, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sign up for a new Tick Tick account. And to do that, you can see I have my internet browser open here. And I'm just going to go to ticktick.com. And that'll bring up the Tick Tick website. I have a, a menu up here on the top and I'm just going to click sign up for free. So I'm going to sign up for a new account and this is going to be called Joshua Best Complete Guide because that's what we're working on here. And I'm going to use a different email address that I have specifically for this. And I'll type in a password and then click the sign up button. Right, so it's creating my new account here and that's how easy creating a new account is basically putting in your email address and making up a password so that's pretty cool um, so what does it tell us right here after we sign up well it says there's a pop-up here that says inbox welcome to tick tick you can begin to add memos ideas tasks into inbox and check back to organize them later all right, let's hit the next button here. So it says smart list, set up due dates for your tasks and view them in today, next seven days or calendar. Okay, looks like there's one more, create a task, add a task in the field and press enter to save. Ready to go, okay. So now it says try creating a task using, and I didn't quite catch it. But let's go ahead and try to create a new task, our first task, and we'll call it our first task. I put in the description and I hit enter. Okay, and so that's how easily we can uh, create a new task, so that's cool. But let's go back and read some of what this says. So there was a couple of tasks already in the inbox when we first set up the new account, so let's go back and read those. The first one says, welcome to Tick Tick. All right, and it says, you have joined the hundreds of thousands of others who are using Tick Tick to make life easier. Tick Tick lets you keep track of your tasks, drop a schedule, and share projects with anyone around you. And we can use it on Mac, Windows, Android. So that doesn't really provide us too much information. Let's go ahead and check that one complete. Let's take a look at what can you do with Tick Tick. And this just gives us a list. This looks like a checklist, which says add tasks and reminder, never lose track of your to-do list, set flexible repeating intervals. So again, this is just more description of what Tick Tick can do and what you can do with Tick Tick. It doesn't necessarily give you a how to set up your system at all in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one as complete too. This one looks like, uh, yeah. So I marked that one complete. And let's go ahead and mark our first task as complete as well. All right, then the last thing I wanted to do was go over to the email and see what sort of emails TickTick sent us. 
So here's my email that I signed up with and I do have a welcome email from TickTick. Let's go ahead and see what it says. Welcome to join TickTick.com, your daily must have to get everything perfectly done and keep life well organized. And so we can confirm that this is our email address by clicking the button. And so I'll go ahead and confirm that this is my email address now. And it says that the uh, verification succeeded back to sign in. So I think I could go back and this would take me back to my, uh, my TickTick account. Okay, so we've seen how easy it is to sign up for a TickTick account and get started. The next thing we might want to do is download the apps. So I'm on a Windows PC, so I would want to download the Windows app. So to do that, um, I would go back to TickTick.com. One of the things you'll notice here is that when I type in TickTick.com, it's going to take me back to the web app. Um, which isn't necessarily what I want, where I want to go. So instead, what you can do, if you're in the TickTick -Tick web app, you can click down on this help icon, or it says more if I hover over it. If I click that, the first link in the menu is home, and that's gonna take me to the ticktick.com homepage. All right, so from here, um, I mentioned that there's this menu up at the top, and the second menu item is apps, so I'm gonna click that. And here it shows me all of the different apps that I can download. So if I'm on Windows, I'm going to click the download app button. Now, if I want to download Android, I would click that one. Uh, if I'm on Mac, I would come down here to the uh, Mac button and click download app, Linux and so forth. But I'm going to click on the download app for Windows since that's what I'm running. It's going to come up here. It's going to ask me to save a .exe, so I'll just click the save button. And so once that's finished downloading, I can just click on it and the setup menu will come up and it will start walking you through setting up the uh, TickTick Windows application. So, you know, it asks you, do you want to create a desktop icon? Do you want it to auto start when Windows starts? I'm going to leave those blank and just click next. And then it says click install to continue with the installation. So I'll click install. It goes through the process automatically. And then it says it's completed. So I click the finish button. So now that I have the Windows app installed, I can find it on my start menu. I could either type in tick tick or I could scroll down and find it under tick tick. So under the T's and just click the, uh, and just click the menu option. So it's gonna come up with, uh, do you wanna sign in with email or do you wanna sign in with Google? Well, I already signed up on the web with my email address, so I'm gonna sign in with email. And it's not that email address, instead it's this email address. And I'll type in my password and click the sign in button. All right, and we see the Windows app open for the first time, and it looks very similar to what we were just looking at on the web app which is good. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and maximize this. All right, so we've signed up for our account and we've downloaded the Windows app. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna sign up for the uh, premium version of TickTick -Tick because we wanna cover all aspects of TickTick, -Tick, including the premium functionalities. So I will click on this picture up here in the upper left corner and you'll notice one of the options that comes up in the menu is premium, so I'm gonna click premium. All right, that's gonna open up a website, which I'm gonna drag over to this screen so you can see it. And it allows you to sign up for the premium right here. So I just click the Upgrade Now button. One thing to point out is it is gonna cost. So it says the annual plan is $27.99. So that's if you pay for the whole year. Now, if you average that out among the 12 months in a year, it's gonna come out to less than $2.40 a month. Now it does give you the option, I'm gonna hit the Upgrade Now button. It does give you the option to pay per month. So if I select this drop down and select month, it's gonna say $2.79 per month. So not the $2.40 per month that it kinda of lists down here, that's only if you pay annually does it come out to that. If you pay per month, it's $2.79 a month, which in my opinion is still, <laughs> still pretty good. Um, you really can't beat that price. Uh, I'm gonna click PayPal, so I'm gonna pay through PayPal.
And I'm just gonna enter my PayPal email address and click next. All right, so then I get upgrade success. So, um, some of the parts that you didn't see is it just kind of took me through the PayPal screens. And so PayPal, you know, if you use PayPal, you probably have it already set up already where it's hooked to your bank account. And that's how I have mine set up where um, I can pay through PayPal, but what it really does is just kind of reaches into my bank account and grabs the $2.79 out of my bank account and then pays it through PayPal. And, um, and PayPal gives you a couple other different options too. I think you can pay directly with a card if you want to and things like that. But you know, those screens will walk you through it. It had some personal information on there, so I didn't, I didn't show it all. But uh, once you make it through the PayPal screens, uh, you should see this screen which says upgrade success, enjoy now. And you can also click a link to get an invoice. I wanna click that link and just see what, what it shows me. So it takes me to the settings menu, which says, wow, you're already a premium user. And it gives me my next billing date. Uh, but it doesn't really give me an invoice, so I'm not I'm not sure why it was saying uh, view an invoice. Uh, I'm gonna click the enjoy now button and see where that takes me. So that takes me uh, back to the TickTick -tick web app. Okay, cool. All right, so I've signed up for my TickTick -tick account. I've downloaded my Windows app, and now I'm signed up as a premium member. I'm really ready to get started now in TickTick. -tick. So the, one of the first things that I like to do is change my theme. You might like this lighter colored theme, uh, but for a lot of people that kind of hurts their eyes and it doesn't really hurt my eyes, but I really prefer the darker theme. So if I click the picture again up in the upper left um, and I click the second option, which is theme, that's going to bring up a couple different options. Now, since I'm a premium member, I can choose any of these options. So if I, if I want to look at New York, I could pick New York and set that as my theme. Let's see how that looks. So let me just click save. Okay, that, that's not really my style. Really my style is just a dark theme. So I'm gonna go back to the theme options and I'm gonna check out gray first. Okay, so gray really makes this left panel gray, but the main sections are still white. So I'm gonna try dark. All right, so this is what I like, a little bit of a darker theme. It is a little easier on the eyes. I'm gonna click the save button to keep that theme. All right, and the first thing that we wanna do now is I just wanna take you through a navigational overview of how TickTick -tick is set up. So we've already visited this picture in the upper left corner. Um, but let's just go through it. So it has a couple options when we click on it. We can, uh, we can go to our settings. We can go to theme, which we've already done. We can check out statistics. We can, we can sign up for premium again, which we've already done, or we can log out. All right. So that's good to know. Um, let's just click on settings. I'm not going to go through the settings today, but if I click on settings, uh, it gives you a lot of different options. If you want to look ahead and look at all the different settings, you can click on settings and go check that out. Otherwise, I do plan to cover all of the settings in one of the upcoming videos of this particular series, The Complete Guide to Tick Tick. So I will, uh, I will talk about those in a later video. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close out for now. The other thing we wanted to check out was statistics. So let me click on statistics here. Okay, so this is opening up a website. Let me just drag it over so you can see what I'm seeing. All right, so like you would expect, there's not much information here because we just haven't used TickTick -tick that much, but it does tell us that today's completion, we've completed three tasks today, and we've completed three tasks in total. It looks like it gives us some, some graphs and charts. That might be interesting or useful to some people. Maybe we'll revisit statistics uh, in a future video as well. But before we leave here, let's check out the task category. So there's our three completed tasks we've done. All right, and let's look at focus. What's going on over there? Looks like we can scroll through. We can look at daily, weekly, monthly. All right, so yeah, we'll revisit the statistics as well. So for now, let's close out of that. Okay, so that covers everything in our profile. I'm gonna call this little icon in the upper left our profile picture. And so we've covered 
all of the navigational options under the profile picture. So let's, so let's keep going down. So the next section, if I hover over it, says tasks. And that's the section that we're currently looking at. That's the main, um, that's the main screen of TickTick. It gives us our main views. So up at the top, we see today, next seven days and inbox. We also see we have sections for lists, tags, filters. We also have completed tasks, a trash can, and a link to a summary. And then in the next section is our main section for tasks. I'll call this our task panel. And then over at the far right, if we click on a task, we would see, we would see the details of that particular task. And I think most users of TickTick would spend most of their time in the task view. Uh, but there's other views to check out, so let's see what else is on this left, uh, left side panel. Underneath the task view is the calendar view. Now this is one of the more popular premium features, and we'll definitely cover the calendar in a future video in this series. Underneath calendar is habits. Now this is kind of separate from tasks where we can track our habits and we will definitely get into that as well. Below habits is a little magnifying glass, which is the search. This will allow us to search our, it says we can search tags, lists, filters, and tasks. So, and I think this is a pretty useful tool, the search feature. Let me close out of that and keep going down. All right, and down towards the bottom on the left side, we see a little circular icon. Now that's sync, and this mostly runs automatically. This basically syncs tick tick across the different applications that you have. So if you're using the web app, if you're using the Windows app, if maybe if you're using the mobile app, it, this allows them to sync any changes you make to tasks across all those different apps. And it works pretty good. And most of the time it runs automatically. Now, if you see a case where you've updated an app, maybe on the mobile and you're not seeing it reflected here in the Windows app, you might just come down here and click this little sync icon and it will run the sync for you. All right, now below that is a little bell. That's for notifications. So if I click on that, it says I have no notifications. Um, it says you can receive notifications from shared lists and the system. Now I found because I don't use shared lists that often that uh, I don't come to this notification screen very often. So now the last item on the lower left is a little question mark in a circle. So we assume that's a, a help. And so if I click on that, what are my options? I can view on the web. I can check for an update. So since I'm in the Windows app, this is gonna check to see if there's any updates to the Windows application that I could install and get the latest functionality. I can provide feedback to TickTick. -Tick. If I see maybe an issue with the system, I can provide that feedback to TickTick -Tick directly using that link. And I can also go to the change log. So this is interesting. Let me click on the change log. And so this tells me on the last update that the Windows application had, this is what was updated. So support for searching task comments when searching. So a little bit of added functionality was added the last time they uh, updated the app. So that's kind of cool. And we can just click the got it button. All right, so that kind of covers a quick overview of the navigation within TickTick. At this point, I want to stop and Go back to the tasks view. And what I want to cover next is all the different ways that we can capture tasks because one of the most important things about a system like TickTick -Tick is that you can easily capture tasks when they come up. So I want to cover all of the different ways that we can capture tasks. Now we already did one. That was when we first signed up for the account. We put our cursor in this add task uh, box and we put the description of the task in there and we added our tasks. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate that again. I'm in the inbox and I put my cursor in the add task box and I say, and I'm going to call this one our second task and I hit enter and that's all there is to it. And so that's pretty simple. Now, if I'm in TickTick, -tick, that's the way I would generally add a task to TickTick. -tick. 
But there are other ways. So let's say that I'm viewing another task. So I'm, I'm looking at this welcome to tick tick task and I'm reading through it and it sparks, um, it sparks something that I need to do. One option I have is to use a keyboard shortcut within tick tick and that is control plus the N key and is a Nancy. That will take my cursor right back up to that input task box. And then I can, again, type the description of the task. So third task, hit enter. So that's pretty easy. A fourth way is if I'm not within Tick Tick, let's say I'm out browsing the web. Um, I'm looking at a couple different things. Uh, let's say I'm Googling Milky Way and this, I see, I noticed this 13.61 billion years. And so that kind of sparks something and I need to add a task to Tick Tick. I don't need to open up Tick Tick again. I can add a task directly from where I'm at just by using a different keyboard shortcut. This one is Control plus Alt plus A and it brings up this Tick Tick input box. Now, this only works because we have the Windows app already installed. If we didn't have the Windows app installed, this would not pop up. But since we do, this will pop up anywhere within Windows. Uh, no matter what we're doing, we, we can hit Control plus Alt plus A, and it'll pop up this uh, Tick Tick input box. And again, we can put uh, Task 4. And we hit Enter, and that's all there is to it. Now, if I go over to Tick Tick again, I can see task four is already in there. All right, so we've covered how we can use the input box within Tick Tick. We can use the keyboard shortcut within Tick Tick, control plus N, which takes us to the input box. And we can use the global keyboard shortcut, control plus Alt plus A, to pop up a Tick Tick input box. But there are other ways to add tasks to Tick Tick. Um, let's cover way number four which is through email. If you open up the email account that you use to sign up for TickTick -tick with, you can actually send an email through TickTick. -tick. And a lot of times you use this when you're forwarding a email into TickTick. -tick. So let's say that I had this um, security alert and this is a task that I need to do. So I'm going to forward this And the email that I'm going to forward it to is to do at mail.ticktick.com. Now I can do this and it will know which TickTick -tick account to add this task to based on the email that I'm sending it from. So since I'm sending it from the email account that I used to sign up uh, for TickTick, -tick, it's going to know to, to add that task to that account. So let me go ahead and send this. And let's just see how long it takes to show up in Tick Tick. And I'm going to hit the sync button. Didn't quite show up yet. I'm going to hit the sync button again. And there it is. So you see it, it has the email subject as the task description. And if I click on it, it has the actual email as the task um, details. Okay, now there is another way to send a task into email. Let's say that you're not using your email address that you have linked to your TickTick -tick account, that you're sending it from your work email or some other email that you have, and you need to get it into your TickTick -tick inbox. Well, you can go to TickTick -tick on the web. So let me open up TickTick -tick on the web. From here, I'm gonna click the profile pick. I'm gonna click settings. I'm going to go down to calendar and mail. From here, it gives me a unique email address, and this is specific to my TickTick -tick account. So I can send an email from anywhere to this email address, and it will show up in my TickTick -tick account. So I'm not going to open up a different email account. I'm just going to send it from the, from the same email account, but just know that you could send it from any email account to this specific address. And I'm going to call it a task from any email address. 
and I'm going to click send. And then I'm going to open up Tick Tick, uh, my Windows app. And I'm just going to hit the sync button. We may have to wait just a few seconds for it to come through. I'll hit the sync button one more time. And there it is, a task from any email address. So I could send it from any email address and it comes right in here to my Tick Tick inbox. Now one other thing I wanted to point out about that, if I go back to my settings within Tick Tick, so I just showed everyone my unique Tick Tick email address and what if I'm afraid now that I'm gonna get tasks, I'm gonna get people sending tasks to me from all over the place because they know my unique email address. Well, what I can do is I can click the reset button and it gives me a new unique email address. So now I don't have to worry about that um, because I can just hit the reset button after this video is done and nobody can send me a task uh, to my Tick Tick inbox. All right, so that covers the different ways that you can send a task through email into your Tick Tick inbox. What other options do we have? Well, there's the mobile apps, which I'm not gonna cover today because I'm gonna have a whole video on mobile. But there's also one other way to add a task to Tick Tick. So I'm gonna go back to this web page that had the Tick Tick apps on it. This is where we clicked uh, to download the Windows app. If I keep scrolling down, um, you'll notice Chrome extension and Firefox extension. Now I primarily use Chrome, so I could download the Chrome extension. And in fact, I already have it downloaded, but if I needed to download it, I could just click on the button. And let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna go over since uh, Chrome extensions don't work in incognito, I just need to open up uh, a different Chrome browser that's not incognito. So let's say I'm on the web and I'm searching up something kind of cool. Maybe I'm searching up Milky Way Galaxy and I'm kind of reading about it and I see an interesting fact that it sparks me to think of a task. So maybe this 13.61 billion years made me think of something or something else I need to research. I can highlight it, I can right click and since I have the Chrome extension installed, I can say add to Tick Tick. It pops up a little window. And it lets me add some additional information if I want to, but usually I don't want to and I just want to hit add because most of the time I want to add tasks as quickly as possible because I don't want to lose my train of thought. Another way to add tasks, um, Using the Chrome extension is to select the Chrome extension from the extension menu within Chrome. So I'm picking Tick Tick. It's going to pop up a little window, which I'm dragging over from my other monitor. And this is actually going to bring up the inbox itself. And so if I wanted to view my inbox right here within Chrome, I could do so. But usually I don't use it that way, but I might add a task here, right? So I could say adding a task from the Chrome extension. Hit enter just like I would, and it should show up in my inbox. If I go back to the Windows app, again, it's there almost immediately. All right, let me close out of that. I'm gonna go back to that download application page on Tick Tick. So they have the Firefox extension, which I won't demonstrate. I don't really use Firefox that often. But here's some interesting things, Outlook add-in and Gmail add-in. So these are add-ins that you can add to your email inbox uh, that will allow you to manage Tick Tick directly in your email accounts. So let me click the download on G Suite button here for Gmail and we'll see how that looks. So we'll just click the install button. Um, it's gonna pop up here and I'm gonna click continue. It says choose an account and this is the right email address. That's the one I want. So I'm gonna pick it. Send a verification code to make sure it's me. Put in the verification code and click next. It asks you, uh, this is all the different access you're gonna give Tick Tick. You can say allow or you can hit cancel if you don't want to. And so now it says Tick Tick has been installed. So we click the done button. All right, so let me jump back over to my email account. So one of the things that you'll notice is that it gives you a security alert because uh, just letting you know that you've given Tick Tick access to your email, which you may or may not want to do. That's up to you. 
And so now when you sh when you come over to your uh, Gmail account, over on the right side, you'll see a tick tick icon. And if I click the tick tick icon, you can see um, it opens up a little sidebar with tick tick. It says get started by opening an email or a conversation. So I'm just going to open up this uh, Google security alert. And you'll see it populates um, some task details based on that email. So the task name is the same as the email subject and the task content comes in from the email body. Now, if I wanna save this as a task, I just scroll down to the bottom and click the add task button. And so now I should have that task in my tick tick. And if I go over to my Windows app again, there I see a security alert. It came in with a due date actually of today. I'm not sure why that happened because uh, I don't remember putting a due date on there, but the task does show up here in my inbox and that's what we would expect. Um, so I've covered a variety of different ways to add tasks to TickTick. -tick. And again, I think that's very important because you want your system, your to-do system or your task management system to, to be able to seamlessly use it throughout your life, throughout your working life, uh, maybe while you're on the go, including the mobile app. I know I didn't cover the mobile app today because we're going to have a whole video on mobile. Um, but you want it to be um, usable. You don't want it to be cumbersome. So that's why TickTick -Tick gives you a variety of ways to add tasks. Now, don't forget, probably the most common way is to just go into your inbox and use the, the input task box um, like, like we did in the first example. So that's going to wrap up part one of this 12-part series. We covered a lot of basics, how to sign up for a new account, how to add tasks. And in the next video, we're going to get into the nitty gritty details of tasks. Well, thanks for watching. Have a good one.